I really like shellac. Um, it's my go-to finish for small projects and for things I want to get done really fast. Um, it's really easy, but a lot of folks I know have problems with it. And one of the problems is it's not really ready to go either right out of the can or if you're starting with flakes, um, there's a little bit of work you need to do before you can start finishing a piece of furniture. So. Um, Typically, I recommend uh, just using a can of shellac. Seal Coat is a de-wax blonde shellac. I thin it down 50-50 with alcohol. I'm ready to go. So this is pretty easy, but flakes offer a couple benefits, and I think it's worth the effort to go the flake route. I think that uh, the whole process is based on going really fast. I find that, that flakes dry a little bit quicker than the canned shellac, and it's also available in a few different colors. Uh, anything from a real blonde shellac, which is going to give you almost a clear finish, to oranges, up to a garnet shellac. Why do I want to use colors? Um, if I'm fuming oak for an arts and crafts finish, the ammonia gives it sort of a cool look. I like to warm it up with a nice garnet shellac coat before I finish off with a wiping varnish. And things like walnut, especially kiln dried walnut, that can be a little bit dead. It really benefits from a coat of orange shellac. But other than that, I'm primarily working with lighter colored shellac if I'm not really trying to impart a tone. So I prefer a blonde shellac and I prefer a de wax shellac. A shellac has naturally occurring waxes in it um, that both inhibit its protection. It also inhibits the ability of other finishes to stick to it. And that's one of the great things about shellac is it sticks to almost any finish and any finish sticks to it. So we get rid of the wax and it really helps us out on a few levels. So um, the next thing about flakes, and I think it's the toughest part, is getting the right concentration of flakes to alcohol. This is referred to as a pound cut. So basically a pound of shellac flakes and a, pound of alcohol, and a gallon of alcohol is a one pound cut. And since we're never mixing up that much, we need a simpler way to get there. And the easiest way without measuring, without weighing anything, is to pour some shellac flakes in a jar. And then just add alcohol all the way up to the top of the flakes. That's it, let it set. It should dissolve uh, completely overnight. If you keep it around and give it a shake every now and then, that'll help this sludge from building up on the bottom. But basically, this should dissolve overnight, and what you're left with is a really heavy, almost maple syrup consistency of shellac. This is way too heavy to use. Uh, this is gonna cause a lot of problems, a lot of runs and drips. It's gonna stay sticky for a long time. We need to thin this down. To do that, I use uh, my ex turkey baster that I keep in the shop. And basically, uh, the general rule is one squirt of my heavy concentration shellac with about three squirts of alcohol. That gives me uh, a rough consistency um, that I can apply. And what I'm looking for is a shellac that goes on um, really thin without streaking, without dripping, and it dries really fast but there's still a heavy enough concentration that I can actually build a finish with three or four coats to get the look that I want. So there's two and I'll give it six of the alcohol. This is regular denatured alcohol that you pick up from the hardware store. Um, I know a lot of folks use Everclear, uh, which has a lower water content and works really well. Okay, so this should be somewhere between one and two pound cut of shellac. Uh, I don't really know, and I'm not really too concerned about it. Uh, basically, I'm going to sort of test it out by actually applying it to the wood itself. And then if it flashes off too quickly and I don't feel like I'm getting a build, I'll add more shellac. If it goes on kind of streaky and sticky, I'll just add a little more alcohol to it. 
So I just keep a rag in a jar. The good thing about shellac, because it's a solvent-based finish, as long as you keep a rag in an airtight container so that alcohol doesn't evaporate, uh, it'll stay usable for a long time. So that's just about dry and it's not streaky and there's just a very slight tack to it which tells me that I am getting some shellac on there. It's drying a little bit on the slow side um, so I'm going to add just a little bit more alcohol to that. So the other benefit of mixing up um, a really heavy batch and then just diluting it as you need it is that when shellac is this thin, you go through it pretty quick. And rather than sit and wait on shellac flakes to dissolve every time I want to mix up a thin batch, uh, every time I run out of this, I can go to my heavy cut and I'm back to working in just about five minutes or so. So that's pretty dry and on a typical project, um, the first thing I'll do, I'll put on one coat and it may raise the grain a little bit and make it a little bit rough. So I'll sand down that first coat with fine sandpaper once that's dry. And now it's really smooth again, but the difference between this and that previously sanded surface is that the shellac has soaked in, it's dried, it's sealed all those fibers. So now once I sand it smooth again, I have a really stable substrate that I can build up layers of finish on really quickly. The thing about shellac being a solvent-based finish is that it will re-dissolve the previous layers. So you gotta be careful not to rub back and forth over the wood because you run the risk of pulling up the finish as you're trying to lay it down. So I'll just go in successive, slightly overlapping coats. And typically on a small project like a box or a wall cabinet or a picture frame, by the time I work all the way around the project, um, the first areas are dry enough to continue coating. So even though it takes three or four coats, it actually goes pretty quick because it's kind of a nonstop process. And because uh, the shellac dries through the evaporation of the alcohol, um, that evaporation uh, causes the surface to be kind of cool. So if the surface is still kind of cool to the touch, it means that alcohol is still evaporating. And what I'm looking for is not a really high gloss, like French polish, a high style finish. I'm really looking to sort of mimic a nice oil and wax in the wood finish with a nice kind of satin luster. The ad advantage of shellac though is that that shine, the sheen that it builds, it's more durable and more permanent than an oil finish which, which can get kind of dry looking. So I'll shoot for a finish which is maybe slightly shinier than what I want. I'll wait for that to dry. So maybe wait 10 or 15 minutes. Now some folks recommend waiting overnight, but um, if I am working on holiday presents that need to get wrapped up, overnight is out of the question. So uh, 10 or 15 minutes until that surface is nice and dry and no longer cool to the touch. And I can just add some steel wool and wax on this and buff it out and I'm good to go.
This is 4 aught steel wool and just some paste wax. And that's it. That's a really nice fast finish. Um, I also wrote an article on this for Fine Woodworking Magazine in a recent issue. If you want more information on shellac finishes overall, take a look.